Heidegem, a small town in Belgium, famous of yesteryear for its diamond cutting and polishing, but of course today it's equally famous for the Huben family. The view from the local church, looking down upon the small village of Heidegem, not much has changed over years really, small manufacturing units, which is very commonplace of course in today's society. church where Jeff, Jeff Huben, was married, still stands of course, the windmill where the local farmers use extensively for their bread to be ground, and there's young Jeff, handsome as he was many years ago. Behind every great man of course is a lady, and when Jeff met and married Evelyn, a diamond cutter's daughter, he discovered a real diamond. The canals, of course, of yesteryear were used extensively for transportation. There's your River Neve, which Jeff and Evelyn spent very many happy hours in their courting. Still nice and green, clear water, a few fishes, which no Jeff, no doubt Jeff is reminiscent of what he'd caught. The school where Jeff went was a boy. That's the back of the school. The front of the school hasn't changed one bit. No doubt Jeff is thinking of the days when every day was sunshine and a bottle of water and a piece of bread and every day, as I say, was sunshine. The house where Jeff was born 70 years ago, unfortunately, it's now under demolition orders. The grass and the weeds are growing, of course, and the paintwork is not pristine as it was of yesteryear, but fond memories of those days when Jeff was a schoolboy. Again, the long hot summers and the love of nature in the local woods of Eidegem, in particular the birds, the feathered variety, the house where he played very many happy hours with his close friend, the local coal mine where Jeff first started work at Winterslag, and the hard times, no doubt, are still in Jeff's memories. In later years, he learned the very skilled craft of diamond cutting and polishing. And Jeff's natural patience and perfection came very much into play, which has held him in good stead, even today, with the love of his pigeons. A real craftsman at work. The name Huber had been at the very top for years, but even to this day, Bourges remains the favorite race. Jeff, with his dear old dad, started back in those days the foundation of a world famous family. For example, the good Blauen, son of the old Blauen. The Gushot and Duven, granddaughter of Desmond Matisse's Gennard. The Baron, a super racer and the son of a good Blauen. The young radio, typical even to David Hoopen family, a son of the old radio. The old Lichtan, yet another one to lay the foundation of his remarkable family of winners. Jeff himself keen to encourage the local youngsters, showing the finer points of the Huben family, and of course Jeff himself showing how tame and friendly, even to this day, they still are. His lovely wife Evelyn shares the joy of pigeons with Jeffrey. And of course Jeff on race day, like us all pigeon fanciers, keen, wound up and enthusiastic for days racing. Jeff, with his lifelong friend Stan Ray Mackers, and unfortunately now has passed away. Look at the Huben pigeons, for example, the young Baron, son of a Baron, the world-renowned pigeons. The artiste, his pedigree can be traced back to Jeff's grandfathers. The good Zorton, the good dark one, Levin first plus much, much more, son of a young radio and the old Lich Stan. Good Duvenick, a big winner as a stock end, she's world class, a granddaughter of a young radio. A young artiste, a legend in the Huben family. A son of the old artiste and the first. Winners and winners and winners. Sissy, a daughter of a young baron and a head good divinic, formed a unique breeding couple of breadwinners throughout the world. Sonny, a fly machine and sire of very many winners. Second ace pigeon all Belgium. The Viking, an esper of Sonny and cast in the same mold. Super successful. The hero. Yet another star in a loft of superstars, father of a famous Porky. 
Stella won three top national prizes from, of course, Bourges, the Huben specialty. The press, the worldwide press, acclaimed the continuing success of the megastars of Eidegem. But really, it all starts at number 12, Herbert Strad in Eidegem. No lay-ins for the master. Early to bed, early to rise, makes a champion fancier, is the motto of the Huben family. And of course, each morning starts with breakfast. A lovely evening, bringing Geoffrey his bacon. Always looking after Jeff's every need. No doubt whilst Jeff is making his bacon sandwich, contemplating and planning a very, very busy day ahead. A day which starts very much the same winter and summer. A family conference, a daily ritual in the Huben family. Jeff, the captain of operations, Nadia, ever enthusiastic. Evelyn, of course, Jeff's wife. And Roberto, Nadia's husband. Luke, known as the bookkeeper. Cindy, the apple of Jeff's eye, his granddaughter. And Monique, Luke's wife, a team. The team of the Huben family, which have made them world famous. After a quick pep talk by the captain, tasks to achieve, Luke says, come on lads, let's get on with it. So, adorning their loft coats, and their slippers, from the hygiene point of view, the team sets about the daily task. Winter and summer, the routine is the same. This perhaps is the secret behind the Huben family's continuing success. Team spirit, enthusiasm, and dedication, of course. With the instructions ringing in their ears from the captain, they set about their tasks. They all have specific jobs to do. Robert, for example, looks after the breeders. Evelyn, a loft of widowers and youngsters. Nadia, two teams of widowers. Doors are open. The widowed cocks take their exercise in the morning sun. How well they look. Cleanliness is next to godliness, is the Huben motto. Cleaning out every day. Every day, winter and summer, the tasks are performed by all the family. The tameness and the affinity and the closeness of these Huben pigeons is remarkable. Luke, scraping away. Pigeons enjoying his company. No better way to keep a loft clean than with a good hoover. All the nooks and crannies and the enthusiasm and energy used is shared by all the family. Nadia ensuring the drinking area is clinically clean. 
Again, that tameness, that link with the family is shown clearly by Nadia. Young Cindy calling her favorite young cock up. Typical dark Reuben. Perhaps that's the secret of their success. Whilst that's going on, young Robert is busying himself with the breeders. This is the center of the Huben family where the stock pigeons are kept. So obviously their health and happiness is vital to the continued success of the family. Again, scraped out, cleaned out, disinfected out each and every day. To watch these people work is very remarkable with their enthusiasm and dedication to the job. Nothing is left except the cleanliness, the health and happiness of the pigeons. Water with disinfectant is used extensively throughout the lofts. 100% health is the only way to win the kind of races the Hoobans excel in. Again, hands and knees, scrubbing away. It cannot be emphasized enough, it's not for the cameras, this is done each and every day, winter and summer. The bath, never a vital aspect of the Huben husbandry. All inmates enjoy a bath once or twice a week with added bath salts to ensure the softness and relaxation of the muscles. When the water goes in, no pigeons flapping and flying around your head, they are quite content with this twice weekly ritual. Feeding. The Hubans see feeding as a real art. The ritual feeding always takes two hours. After the pigeons have finished their morning exercises, they are called in with lots of encouragement with sweet seed and what have you. Pigeons with which race and compete in the short, middle and long distances are all in the same loft. So each pigeon has his own feeding plan, being adjusted, of course, to the day of being basketed. On the day of arrival from the race, they get a ration of what we call depurative, but without the barley. And in the late afternoon, a little more. During the whole week, the widowers, which are going to be entered on the middle distance, get a flat tablespoonful of diet mixture every morning. And in the evening, a heap tablespoonful of racing mixture. On the morning of basketing, they get as much as they can eat of a diet mixture. The pigeons deployed on the short distance also get a tablespoon of diet mixture in the morning and as from Tuesday morning onwards a flat tablespoonful half diet half racing mixture is given. In the evening also a tablespoonful of sports mixture is given. Once a week the racing mixture is prepared with natural substances like lemon juice and brewer's yeast. The young pigeons follow nearly the same food range only some barley is added to the diet mixture and the racing mixture fed to the young pigeons is a little lighter, a little more wheat, a little more barley and less of the pulses, maple peas or what have you. Equally important, of course, to the feed is the drinking water. Twice a day the water is changed every time a drinker is replaced by another. 
meaning there's one always in use and one not. And of course, the spread of disease is then kept to a minimum. Notice, by the way, the drinker is standing on a bench, so on the actual floor, wetness and dust and feathers is avoided. And of course, food is fed into the ultra-clean hoppers, ready for the waiting inmates. Everything in the Huben loft, nothing is taken to chance, and the quality and condition, of course, reflects this. Timing is clockwork precision by all the family. Nothing is ever left to chance. This must be the testimony of every breeder and racer who hopes to succeed in the sport of pigeon racing. Young bird racing, of course, very important to a Huben family. Incidentally, this Sputnik trap, which they're going to be released from, note the little ladder inside. In the daytime, it can be opened and it can bask in the sunshine. And of course, in the evening, it can be closed across, stop the pigeons and drafts and the possibility of head colds. The methods of a Huben family are very simple. Both widowers and breeders are generally paired at the end of November. They raise a round of youngsters. Among the breeders, the young ones are weaned off by the age of 23 days. The widowers' youngsters are weaned off at 17 days and they are put into a separate loft together with their hens. In this way, they do not start the moat too early and wing feathers are in reasonable condition when the longer young bird races come. After the young birds have been flying for a few weeks, they're treated against trichomonosis. The sexes are left together, and after flying quivering about 65, 70 miles twice, the hens and cocks are then separated. Then, when raced, the compartment door separating the young hens and the young cocks are opened and for a few hours spend time together. The other youngsters are played on the nest. So, cocks and hens, of course, tread among themselves. Sometimes to make the numbers up, an old cock or old hen are put into the team, and this way keeps everybody happy. To delay the moulting of the young bird team, half the team are darkened down. Even the evening at six o'clock, the curtains are drawn till eight o'clock in the morning. And this is from halfway through February till the end of May. Darkened youngsters are played on a similar system, a mild form of widowhood. And again, of course, in this way, the molten is delayed. The youngsters raced on the both systems are staked and entered in the national races at the beginning of September. The darkening of young pigeons is a necessary intervention to delay the molten. experience of a Huben family is that the losses on both systems is no bigger than normal. When the youngsters are basketed, a special effort is made to give them extra motivation. And of course, Jeff, looking through the creep people, see the behavior of his favorites, possibly his nomination pigeon for that weekend. The hard work of training the youngsters is left to Evelyn and Nadia. There are eight stages up to about 40 miles, for which every consideration is taken into account, the weather, etc., of course. Carefully loaded on 
Different to the very old days when we all had bicycles, but there we are. And they go. And away. Hopefully in a safe return. Meanwhile, whilst the youngsters are being basketed for a race, each and every one is evaluated. The full wing is essential. The throat, of course, is examined as a reflection of their health. A nice pink throat. Bright eyes. Dry head, of course. Clean feet. All helps in the selection of the young pigeons. The loss of the Huben family is not out of the ordinary, really. Every loft is a roof covered with towels. And on top, right along the very top, is a pipe, which forms the ridge. Of course, underneath makes it easy for air to circulate, which is so important in keeping pigeons in tip-top condition. The sun, of course, is extremely important. And all compartments, a big glass sheet in the roof. So, helping the pigeons to maintain and keep that condition, which is so vital. The traps are windproof, because in many cases, the draft, one-eyed cold and headaches, as the Belgians call it, can be the cause. Sometimes the excess sunlight is kept away and screening is put up. Windows open, of course, to provide the much-needed oxygen. Ventilation, of course, with no drafts. And the sunlight is dimmed just a little. As Jeff feels that direct sunlight can cause a very mild form of one-eyed cold. Note the simplicity underneath. Open air towels to draw out the stale air. And the clear towels to allow lightness through. The pipes, you see, are the heating pipes underneath the widowed lofts. Obviously, when it comes to health, the Huben family take no risks at all. Their veterinary advisor, Ralph Herbots, is almost one of their lodgers at the house of the Huben. Fortunately for the Huben family, Raf is a racing pigeon fancier himself, which is an added bonus because he can look for not only the potential sickness or illness, he can look for the fitness of racing pigeons. Treating pigeons blind is not the Huben way. They are tested for trichomonos by being swabbed. Young Raff is looking through his microscope to find necessary problems or problems could be there. This, of course, is a routine which is carried out in the spring. Worms, trichomonosis, coccidiosis. And if need be, when treatment is needed, it is given. Also a very good opportunity 
in the spring to vaccinate the pigeons for paramyxo and pox. A good time for off to examine the general health and fitness of the inmates. Raf is one of those veterinaries who increasingly wish to go back to the natural products of nature. And extolling the virtues of a rich vitamin preparation given after the race. After antibiotics, of course. And in use of maintaining and keeping the loft and supreme health. The list of products, of course, are endless. But one particular product, which is given with some enthusiasm, is cider vinegar. It's blood diluting, gives soft feather, and is also a disinfectant internally and externally. At all times, of course, Jeff is looking on with great earnest. Natural products can be used to support the intestines when the pigeons have poor droppings. And of course, antibiotics are not the solution to everything. Electrolytes, great recovery aid on the day of the race. No particularly particular company's products are used, but all are used on the recommendation of the veterinary. Bourges, the day has dawned. The race. The race of Bourges is to the Huben family like cricket is to England or Piala to Spain. The excitement and the anticipation. Already, friends, relatives, fellow fanciers are gathering to witness, hopefully, a day of much joy for a Huben family. Jeff, entering the loft to find a few likely drop birds, just in case, of course. Nadia Sistin, and of course one of the helpers, adorning a white coat, all in preparation for the event, as far as the Huben family is concerned, of the year. Lofts, all ready, clocks are waiting, symbols in the correct place. Of course, crowds continue to come. Looking for the odd chair. And there we are on the main road outside the Huben family house. This particular scene would be unique in England. Some of the ladies. Organizing the men. Of course, a last minute scrape. A last minute clean out by Nadia, just to ensure everything is absolutely spot on for a great day. Drop birds are put away. Very important, of course, if you have one come back a little nervous. Another feature of the big day at the Huben family house is the raffle. All the ring numbers are placed on a piece of paper. A hundred franc note is exchanged for that piece of paper. Of course, the first and luckiest one to correctly have the right ring number to the first pigeon will win all the other people's Belgian francs.
prospects being discussed. All in all, the excitement is building to a crescendo. These scenes really are staggering. If, for example, in England it took place, I guess you'd have a riot squad, or certainly the police inquiring what was happening. But it's all credit to the Hoopen family, that their competitors, many, many friends from all parts of Belgium and other parts of Europe, come to witness the great day. Of course, like all pigeon fancies, they're discussing the wind, the estimated time of arrival, and many other factors. Jeff, of course, is naturally being a little tense, but being comforted by a good old friend and best wishes are exchanged. Wives, husbands, children. Cars still arriving. And yet, no sign of the elusive first pigeon. Only drink. Oops. Luke and Monique, their apprehension must now be near. Look out, cries one. Is it? Could it be one from last week, last month, or is it a pigeon? Yes, they seem to think it is. One circle round. Down it goes. We are times taken. The lady on the bike probably going home to tell her husband that the famous Huben family have yet again clocked an early pigeon from Bourges. And whilst she's on her way cycling, yet never one arriving at the Huben lofts. The excitement must be fever pitch. Number one, two or three together. By the way, this is from Bourges, of course, at 480 kilometers. And there's young pigeons amongst them. The whistle, of course, is very much in evidence. Probably thinks to herself, I've done my job, but get in, girl. The scene, of course, is very reminiscent or similar to every fancier who races pigeons. Getting them in and getting that rubber ring off their leg. Jeff Organ orchestrating the events. Monique is just clocked and seemed rather pleased with herself. Quick check of the times, and yet more pigeons are arriving. Have the Hoobins done well? Well, only time will tell. Luke seems to think so. Nine or ten in the clock. Yep. Beer to ease the tension. Perhaps later it'll be champagne. Hopefully it'll be champagne. It's better, he thinks. Of course, he... Regulations in Belgium is a little different to places like England, whereby you have to phone in to the headquarters of the Antwerpen Union, with a wing mark on the pigeon, 
ring number, of course, and the time on the clock. This has to be done within a certain time, which family helps out in conveying the correct information. The Golden Pigeon, the Golden Elf of 91, one of the highest awards in the Belgium racing pigeon scene. The trophies you see reflect the real success of the Huben family. treasured of course and the evening the congratulations bestowed upon the family from friends fancies from all over Europe internationally journalists to interview and be interviewed by with one aim in mind to congratulate the most successful family of racing pigeon fancies perhaps in the world. Nadia, looking lovely. Jeff, of course, proud. And there's the trophy. Each and every one in Belgium with ambition to win. Luke, Nadia being congratulated by Jan Hermans, editor in the famous Belgian Weekly. All smiles all round. And whilst the celebrations are taking place, might be a good idea just to have a look at some of the performances of one particular pigeon which in many people's minds, certainly in the last 10 years, have bred some wonderful middle distance pigeons. Now, of course, is the young artiste. For example, children of the young artiste have won seven times in the first 11 with up to 16,000 pigeons competing. That young artiste breeding seven children to be in the first 11 with up to and sometimes over 16,000 pigeons. Grandchildren of young artiste, 15 have featured in the Belgium national races. And of course there we have up to 49 to near 50,000 pigeons competing. When you consider the children of young artiste in provincial races, 13 times, including firsts, seconds and thirds, are featured with up to five and 6,000 pigeons a race. Grandchildren of a young artiste, as many as 35. In provincial races, in the Antwerpen area, with up to six, seven, 8,000 pigeons have been positioned in the first 10. So that's 35 times in the first 10, just grandchildren of young artiste. And of course, to bring you right up to date, 1996, there could be many, many more added to that, such as the remarkable line of a famous young artiste of the Huben family. Well, it's back to the table. Always amazing with the Belgium celebration evenings, how many fanciers arrive and enjoy congratulate the winners and that's rightly so all around Europe all over Europe even internationally they come Luke of course will join congratulations the ladies Jeff and Evelyn rightly so proudly looking on all the hard work they put in throughout the year has come to fruition and the golden dove itself solid gold been admired by Luke. Mm -hmm. 
down here to have a look and to admire. Probably ask Roberto. Yes, it is. It's really ours this year. Well, young Cindy is anxious to put her authority on the. Yes. Yes, it is. Right. The next part of the evening is presentation to the Hooban family. Unique presentation. Cindy ever smiling. Cameras are ready. member of the family, Luke, Cindy, that young Cindy, being presented by Ken Ichiyokahara from Japan, and it's a very special memento on behalf of Japanese Kajimutu. Marvellous memento for a fabulous evening. Golden Dove 91, presented by Ken Ichi Yokohara. They once said of the Huben family, and in particular Jeff, is well known as Coca Cola and certainly as reliable as the Mercedes Benz. When one talks of racing pigeons, the name Huben is synonymous with success. The next trophy to be presented to the Huben family, the daughter of law, the late Stan Ramacher, is passing to her husband, who is the son, of course, of the late and famous Stan Ramacher. father was a lifelong friend of Jeff. In this moment must be a little sad for Mrs. Ray Marcus, who is presenting the prize to Jeff. They grew up together, they were pigeon fancies together, and more importantly friends together. So it must give a great pleasure on both sides to give and to receive this wonderful trophy. Again, family is being congratulated. Thankfully, Nadia, yes, I know, stepped safely with that wonderful prize from the Japanese Weekly. Sideboard, original, and of course presented in person. It's a Stan Raymacher's trophy. Unusual, but certainly unique, and certainly better, I would think, than the more conventional silver cups. Yes, it's certainly a night to remember. For all the Huben family, friends, and fanciers from all around the world. Huben, Jeff, Luke, and Nadia. Not forgetting, of course, Evelyn and Cindy. Mesdames, Messieurs, maintenant nous arrivons au 
The next big evening in Belgium, of course, is the World Championship evening, sponsored by the famous Versa Lager Company of Corn. There's the trophies. And yet again, the Hubens are there. Wherever success, the Huben family are there. They have their share of the honours. Congratulating, being congratulated. Marvellous team spirit, the Belgian pigeon fancy. Gifts exchanged. And Jeff, having his such of honour, by one of the directors of the Versa Lager Company, being again congratulated by each other. Another proud moment for the Huben family. This World Championship really means what it says. It's open to all pigeon fancies around the world, and very, very many different nationalities are attending in this marvellous evening of celebration and honour. Again, 1993, another Golden Dove was won by, yet again, the Huben family. Again, Jan Hermans extolling the virtues of a wonderful family from Eidegen, whose life Thoughts, work, the betterment of their own marvellous family of racing pigeons, which have bred so many winners for so many people. Wherever racing pigeons are played, as they say in Belgium, or kept, as we say in England. As always with these events, the Belgium national anthem is being played, and courtesy is shown by all therein. Jan Herman's congratulations, Nadia, and of course Luke. Crystal, flowers, truly night celebration yet again for the Hooper family. These photographs will be shown in all the press throughout the pigeon world, and there's many, American, Canadian, British of course, South African, Australian, Canadian, Dutch, German, Portuguese, Swedish, Danish, all European countries, all pigeon papers will have all these wonderful photographs of the famous Huben family yet again winning top honours. At the Huben home we have visual evidence of their success and successes through the very many years. The collection it's bigger every year, bronze, silver and gold, priceless in these trophies. And they represent many great victories for Huben families. For example, the first national yearling from Bourges, first and second national Argentine youngsters, three national aged pigeons, for example, with Sonny, who was second national aged pigeon in 1985 middle distance, Robin. Seventh National Ace Pigeon in 1991, Young Capitan, the ninth National Ace Pigeon, middle distance in 1993. Also, of course, among the trophies is the Garden Dove Trophy of 1991. Overall world champion, second from Versa Lager in 1993. Best loft of all Belgium by the Rouse Dove newspaper. 
first provincial champion long distance Antwerp in 1994 and 1995, showing the true versatility of his family of middle distance, longer distance, and most people will win from them for short distance because they are truly a family of all-round winners. The evidence is there for all to see. And of course, the Huben family's name will live will be edged in stone wherever racing pigeons are raced throughout the world. Well, celebration of another kind. It's birthday. Birthday time for Jeff. He's 70 years young. being held in such esteem by his friends and relatives, they turn out to celebrate with Jeff. They chat of old times, good times, perhaps some of the bad times. But tonight's is Jeff's night. Evelyn, his loving wife, His daughter-in-law, Monique. Friends are plenty. A wave to the crowd. Nadia also adding a congratulations to her dear old dad. And now the apple of his eye, his granddaughter Cindy, is going to take him to, unbeknown to Jeff, a very important part of the evening's proceedings because he doesn't know that the chairman of Belgium Bont, okay, or the English equivalent to the RPRA, Marcel van den Drisch, is going to present him with a badge of honor for 50 years in the sport of pigeon racing. It's a great honor to which Jeff readily accepts. Very few are given, and very many congratulations, sincere congratulations, are offered to one of Belgium's all-time greats. 70 years young. Yet another exhausting evening coming to an end. In Belgium, there was a very famous writer called Felix Timmermans. And it's been said that he's taught the people to read. People today, in many countries, say of Jeff Huben that he taught people and fanciers throughout the world to race pigeons. Young artiste, one of the top breeders of the Huben family, Sarah of Sonny, Chippy and Robin and very, very much more. Sonny, 
one of the flag bearers of the Huben family. In 85, he was second national ace pigeon, and besides, he won sixth and ninth national bourge. Robin, a cracking racing cock, 7th National Ace Pigeon, 3rd Olympiad in La Palmas in Spain. Chippy, a super racer of the Huben family. He won first national Borge against 7,848 pigeons, and also the father of a Rockefeller, who was 11th national Borge against nearly 18,000 pigeons. Montiga, a real cracker, and sire of the Ninth National Limoges against nearly 19,000 pigeons.
Young Capitan, ninth national ace pigeon, and won six national from Borges against eleven and a half thousand pigeons. Chanti. All the ancestors go back to the originals in the 40s and 50s. He bred Herbie, who was fourth national Borge against 10,000 pigeons or more. Gretzkopia is a fantastic breeding mother. She is the dam of Chippy, Robin, Capitan and Halla, and also the daughter of Gomer von Bruggen's Kleitzka. Herbie, he won six national Bourges. Aloha is the brother of Robin and Chippy and sire of four very good racers. He is also the sire of first provincial Orleans against twelve and a half thousand pigeons.
Capitan, the son of young Capitan, who is a super racer for the family. Jello. Again, background goes back very many years. Twice second, second national board against 10,000 and against nearly 9,000 pigeons. Is also the father of Marga. Amiga, young but talented, won some very important prizes in top, top competition. Cindy, one of the wonders of the Huben family. In 1995, she surpassed everything by winning first national Argentine against over 14,000 pigeons.
Bingo again goes back to the old original Huben pigeons. In 1995, he was second, only beaten by Sydney in the national from Argentine. He also won fifth national Borge yearlings against near 11,000 pigeons. Monaco, a cock again steeped in all the old Hooban blood. He is the son of Sonny and Linda. His list of honours go on. He was first provincial Poitiers, fourth provincial Chateau, sixth provincial Bourges against nearly 2,000 pigeons. Gucci, another grandson of a young artiste, again back to the old, he has won fourth against near 4,000 and 28th Orleans with near 17,000 competing.
Bobby, another grandson of young artist, son of the star breeder Galanti. He won second provincial lanes against near 4,000 pigeons. Galanti, son of a young artiste so valuable that he was never put in a race basket. However, he sired Gucci and Robbie, who are some of the top racers in the Hooban colony. Bellini, a cracking racing cock. He is father of Cindy, a first national adjutant against 14,105 racing pigeons.
Orlando, grandson of a young artiste in Sissy, again a top breed of a Huben family. He's a sire of very many famous Huben races. Milton, again one of the super breeders and again in the breeding aviary of the Huben family. Bia, a terrific breeding hen. She is a crossbreed of a young artiste and the cladoscope. She went immediately into the stock loft and became the dam of Macho, Beethoven, Natalie and Silvano and of course the 188. Leva, being the daughter of a young artiste, so valuable, straight into the stock loft. She has already proven a, a marvellous dam of top racing pigeons.
Helga. She is the sister of Chippy, the first national Borge against 7,848 pigeons. Lincoln, grandson of Sony, and because of that fact, he was put straight into the stock loft. Sony, of course, ten times ace pigeon in his brilliant career. <laughs> 